Okay, Rabbi Isai, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. And I could really say that, you know, when we were in MetLife Stadium, they used to say the heroes of the daf. This is a good demonstration of the heroes of the daf after fasting at a busy time, right before Shabbos, everybody comes out, out at a later hour. We have a full complement of 27 Zoomers here. And of course, here in the shul, we have Michal Avram, we have Ruben Shannon, we have Gedalia. Um, I have a feeling we're going to see Berish. Oh, Berish is, uh, Berish is on the Zoom. Uh, and uh, it's really wonderful. Uh, we uh, welcome in Baruch Ian, Abi Spry. Abi, we've been missing you, Abi. Uh, uh, Elliot Udell, Dr. Guy, Saba. And uh, we hope Saba should be able to return to the Shir here shortly. My mother should have a Rufu Shalema, Mel Zachter, Dr. Blood. Timing is off for Minchamara for me. And uh, we had a Simcha, we made Chasana, Sheva Brofus, so a little busy. Okay. The following week we have another Chasana, so Brofus. All right, you should be busy with Simchas and find another Mincha. Dr. Block. <laughs> Uh, Mordechai Sultan, Shalom Fogel, Stephen Holtzman, Berish Gessemann, Marshall Castle, Nachman Chapler. Nachman, you'll be here for Shabbos? Well, well, but okay, but maybe Purim then. I'm hoping Shabbos. Yeah, I'm hoping too. We're not the same without you. Shelley Zeitlin, uh, Shimon Klein, Yitzi Fuchs, Irving Fishbaum, Aaron Swade, Menachem Yumansky, Moshe Lehman, Abraham Rezepkowitz, Yitzi Padower, A. Barbach, Naftali Javelin, Rabbi Kranz, David Helfgott is joining us on Kala Loshen. As we continue this fascinating Mesech uh, uh, Perak, uh, if you remember the Machloikis of Baye and Rava, because we're going to be talking about it for the first half of the evening, the Machloikis of Abayi and Rava is where uh, Mark Frankel, who isn't here yet, but uh, where Mark Frankel uh, finds something uh, like, uh, like um, a, a pen that Marshall dropped. Now, when Marshall realizes it, he's going to be Miyayish, because there's a hundred big pens in Chicago. Right? So he's going to be Miyayish. But he doesn't realize yet he dropped it. So Abaya says that Mark can't keep it because since he wasn't Miyayish yet, because he, wasn't real, he didn't realize it, so therefore Mark can't use it. And once Marshall realizes it's too late because since it came into the possession to Mark before he was Miyayish, he has a fear to return it. Uh, Rava says, no, since Rava says, since we, we know that when Marshall will realize it, he'd, he'll give up hope, it's as if he did already, and therefore Mark could keep the pen. So that's Machloik Yisabai and Rava, and the Gemara now looks into it again. Tojma. Haganav Shinotom Mizev and Nosan a regular Robin Hood, right? He steals surreptitiously, Marshall steals surreptitiously in stealth and he steals from uh, poor Dr. Block and he gives it to Shalom Fogel or, or when Marshall matures he's an open robber where he steals openly from Dr. Block and gives it to uh, Shalom if the Yardin, the Jordan, swept away Dr. Block's stuff and deposited it by, uh, by Shalom, Masha Notal Notal, what Marshall or the Yardin took is taken, and, and Shalom could keep it. So two of the three is easy to understand. Bishlam, Gazlan, the Yardin, the Gazlan, and the Jordan. Dr. Block knows that it was taken from him, so he was Miyayish. The Kachazilu, he realized it, or Miyayish, and he gave up hope. Eliganev, but 
in the case where Marshall's stolen stealth, so Dr. Block doesn't even know yet that his favorite Parker pen was stolen. So uh, it says the Gemara Aleganev Mika Chazi de Miyayish. Does he know about it that he should be Miyayish? So why is why is uh, Shalom allowed to keep it? Tirgam Rapapa Sarapapa answers by interpreting it when it says Aganev, it means Belista Mizuyan. It means that he's like Aganev because he's afraid, and that's why Marshall carries a gun. Unlike a Gazlin that's fearless, here Marshall is not fearless, that's why he car carries a, you know, a uh, Beretta with a silencer, not the two, right? And therefore, in that way, he's, he's compared to a Ghanif, but uh, Dr. Block knows about it because Marshall stuck the gun in his face. So the Gemara says, then why are you calling him a Ghanif? It's the same thing as a Ghazlan, because Dr. Block was aware of it. Says the Gemara, you're right, trade Ghanif Ghazlan. It's two different types of a Ghazlan. One is a robber that steals without fear, and the other one is a robber that steals with fear and brandishes a gun. Tajma. Next case. Shotaf Nar Korov Eitzav Va'avonov. If the river swept away Dr. Black's beams, his wood, his bricks, his stones, Vinosnu Besech Sedei Chavere, and deposited in Sholem's field. Hari Elu Shaloi, they belong to Sholem. Because Dr. Block gave up hope when he saw the, the, the flash flood, when he saw the tsunami steep, sweep his stuff away. So again, this seems to be a riot to Abaya. That it's only because Dr. Block was Mishyayish. Time of the Nisyashu Abayim. It's only because Dr. Block was aware of it. If he wasn't aware of it, like So that's a riot to Abaya. That Yir Shalai Midash is not Kaina. Says Gemara, no. When it says Mibnei Nisyashu Abaylam, that's coming to tell us to exclude if Doctor Block thought he could recover it. No, it's the water sweeps it away a few blocks, and Doctor Block thinks he could get it back. Says Gemara, Hacham of my skin Lahatzel, where he could. If it's coming to preclude the case, if Doctor Block thinks he could. Uh, recover it. So then it's only if we know that Dr. Black said, ah, it's not worth it going around for a radius of, of 15 blocks to look for the stuff. Forget about it. But otherwise, then Shalom can't keep it because he wasn't Miyayish. Says, if it's something that could be recovered, then why does it say in the Sefer, if Dr. Black is running after it, then Shalom has to return it. But if it's talking about a situation where he could save it, then why does he have to demonstrate that he's running after it? Why does he have to run after it? Even if he doesn't run after it, still Shalom has to be concerned that Dr. Black is going to try to recover it and he wasn't Miyayish. I feel says no, here it's talking about where Dr. Block could recover it, but it's going to take a lot of effort. He's probably even going to have to hire somebody to ser start searching, you know, a uh, hundred backyards. So, where the only way that he could uh, get it is with a lot of under duress with a lot of hardship. So therefore, Miratfin, if we see him running, then lo ayayish, then, we, then, Ma, then Sean can't keep it, because then we assume that he's not giving up hope. But a Miratfin, if he's not running after it, since it would be very hard, al yadayat chak, to get it, we could assume that he was miyayish. Yuyish miyayish. Now, the next case is a case where, you know, uh, just, just to some people, I, I, you know what some people is big Um It's funny if I wouldn't know, but 
since it's spelled C A S T L E, it's a perfect gematria. So some people, you know, they just don't know how to mind their own business. Marshall comes into my field and takes Truma for my crops. Now who asked you to come in my field and take Truma for my crops? So the Gemara says as follows. Tojma. Ketzad Omru Atoyrem Shalomidas. He's taking Truma without me knowing about it. Truma say Truma. That the Truma is Truma. Well, Marshall comes into my field. He gathers some crops. And then he, the, the, the average of truma is either a 40th is an ayin yafa, is generous. A 50th is midabaninus, is the you know, average. And a 60th is an iron raw, is a stingy person. So Marshall separated the truma without my permission. So im mishem gazel, if when I come and I say, who let you in? Get out of here. Don't touch my crops. So then for sure, ain't truma a truma. The truma that he separated is not truma. It's all still tevel. None of it belongs to the kain. The imlav, but if I don't indicate that I'm upset, Chumas or Chuma, then what he did is good. Now, how do you know if I'm upset or not? How do you know whether I consider him a thief or I'm amenable to what he did? So, Harishabal Balabayas. I come into the field, I see that he separated Truma. Omatsu, and I t- found him, the Amaloi, and I tell him, Klach Eitzel Yafais. You should have gone to the better crop. You're giving Truma to the Kayin. You should have taken from the better ones. So, Im Nimtsu Yafais, ma'am, if we find better ones. So that means I was appro- I, I approved that he did it. I didn't get upset. What do you do? Why do you touch my stuff? To the contrary, I said, you know, you could have even given better. Then truma is truma. Then I'm, then I'm approving of what he did, and the truma is a good truma. Vim laugh, but if I said you should have gone to the better ones, and we see that there's no better ones, so then you know that I was being full of satire. I was saying, yeah, if there would have been better ones, you would have even given better ones. Then ain't truma is truma. Lick to a bailim. If after he made a pile of truma, I gathered more, vaisifu alayim, and added to his pile. So since I'm adding to his pile, I clearly give a stamp of approval to what this hooligan did. Then benkach or benkach, then in either case, truma sa truma. But here's the problem. Even if we find better ones, so that when I said he should have gone back to the, be- the better ones, it shows that I was approving. Or even if I added to his. At the time that Marshall separated the truma, I didn't make him an agent. So how could he act on my behalf? It must be that we're saying since now I'm approving it, it makes what he did earlier retroactively good. So this is a proof to Rava, who says that since the marshal now, when he finds out, gives up hope on the big pen, it makes it retroactively like he gave up hope, and therefore Mark can keep the pen. So the Gemara wants to use this as a riot to Rava. As, now, I said that outside. Let's see it inside. The chi nimtsu yafas ma'am, if there are better ones. So my staying, you should have gone to the better ones, is taken literally, and it's approval, truma sa truma, but am I? But in the Torah, at the time that Marshall separated it, I didn't know about it yet. I didn't even know he was in the field. Halayavayoda. It must be that since now I reveal that I'm 
approving of it, retroactively it makes it as if he's operating on my behalf. Says, no, no, that's not, Rava says, that's not what it's talking about over here. Tergama Rava, um, even though this was approved to Rava, but Tergama Rava, Rava says, Aliba Dabaya, he answers it according to Abaya. Here it's talking about, you got the whole case wrong. Here it's talking about the Shav Yashliach. Marshall didn't just wander into my field. Even Marshall wouldn't do that. There's a limit to his, you know, yeah, or mischief, or, you know, or n notoriety, or uh, villainy. There's a limit to it, right? Um, what happened over here is the Shav Yashliach. I made him an agent. So the Gemara in a minute is going to say, if I made him an angel, what's the, what's the question? And how can I be mistaved, the Esau, Kedaitach, the Lo Yishav Yishliach, if I didn't make him an agent, he can't take off Truma without me knowing about it. Me have it Truma, it wouldn't be a good Truma. Atem, Gam Atem, Amarachmona. How do we know that you can make a Shliach to separate Truma? You don't have to do it yourself. Because it says Gam Atem. And we learn that from Gam, also, the rabbi says a shliach. It says, Atem gam atem amrachmano, the rabbi shluchachem, to include your agent. But your agent has to be like you. Ma'atem ledatchem, when you do it, you're aware of what you're doing. Av shluchachem ledatchem, when the agent does it, you have to be aware of it. So if Marshall saunters into my field before I'm aware of it, that's definitely no good. I made him an agent. I, so if I made him an agent, then, then it's surely good. What's the question? Why do we need approval? Ah, now some, with Marshall, there's always a story. Always a story. I made him an agent. And what did I tell him? I gave him simple, Marshall. I gave you simple instructions. Now, if I tell you to do it, you do it the average way. I didn't give you any more details, so you didn't give you more details. You do it in the general average way, which is a 50th. Remember, I told you that that's a clever uh, indication in the word truma. Truma is a composite of tre mea, two out of 100, which is a 50th. Right? So he should have taken a 50th. If he was a regular guy, that's what he would have done. I didn't tell him take from these. The normal way that a balabayas takes truma is he takes a 50th. Marshall goes ahead and he takes a 40th. You know, he's a tzaddik on my cheshman. So now the question is, am I... Uh, am I good with that? So, Bo Balabayis, I came, Umatsu, and I tell him, Vamali Klach Eitzel Yafas, you should have gotten even for better ones. So, Im Nimtsu Yafas, ma'am, if there are better than them, so I'm giving him approval. Trumasa Truma. Vim Lav, if there aren't better ones, ain't Trumasa Truma. So now the Gemara tells us a story. Everybody wants to hear a story. Baruch Atari Noi, Alehena Melachi Lamisha, Kol Nia Bidvaro. That's a good story. And his, we welcome in Richard Rosenzweig, who's joining us. And uh, I see that Mo Kushner got in uh, as well, I'm telling you, on an hour and 15 minute late schedule after a fast to have a full compliment of the Oilam is a really big compliment to all of you. So bravo, yeah, bravo, everybody. So what you're saying is you're saying that the quality is the difference with approval? Because the Gomorrah seems... No, no, it could be the quantity, it could be... Obviously, it's the value. Right? So if it's better ones, it's going to be a value that's going to equal to a 40th instead of a 50th. It's in value. Now, um, it could be quantity also. It could be either way. Now, uh, 
we, uh, we just want to remind you that the Eilam should not forget that Shir Matzi Shabbos, this is a challenge, is 10.30. But I, if, if, if the Eilam would know the scar of learning Purim, you know, there was a great tzaddik, the Iglai Tal. And they say over, he writes it, he writes it in the Hakdama to his Sefer that his father learned one time where there was no one else in the world learning for a second. And in that merit, he was zeichet to have a son like the Iglai Tal. Uh, on Purim, there's a lot less learning in the world. You know, that's the, I believe it's the Chsam Seif that says that that's why we find a oddity about this time of the year, which is not by any other Yom Tov of the entire year, that different places in the world celebrate on a different day. So if you're in a walled city from the days of Yeshua ben Nun, you celebrate on Shushan Purim on the 15th. Otherwise, you celebrate on the 14th. Who ever heard of splitting Klal Yisrael? And the answer is, is because since part of this celebration is to become Shikr, and when you're Shikr, you can't learn. But the world can't exist without anybody not learning. So therefore, there had to be two different days. So when, when people on Purim are shikr, the people in the walled cities are learning. And the people in the walled cities are shikr, the rest of the world is learning. You know, so you're covered. Don't worry, you're covered. The Dalia was so worried, what's going to be? Now he, now he says, I could get drunk. I could get drunk. Um, My rabbit Simeon Libby said she never saw me drunk. Shelley, you never saw me drunk either. Uh, the, uh, so anyway, uh, now, Ameimer umazutur v'ravashi iklu l'bustana damari baresa. Amemer, Mazutra, and Ravashi visited the orchard of Mori Baresik. Now, Mori Baresik had a sharecropper. I see Arise, the sharecropper, came and brought them tamre vrimine, dates and pomegranates, vishoda kamayu, and put it in front of them. So, Amemer, Ravashi, Ochli. Amemer, Ravashi, ate. Now, Amemer Ravashi, Toysa says, Amemer Ravashi certainly did not eat, thinking that the sharecropper was giving them from the owner's stuff. Because if the owner doesn't know about it yet, since we pass in like a baya, that you can't do things ahead of time, even if Mari Bar Asik would agree with it, but he doesn't know about it yet. The reason why Amemer Ravashi, uh, the reason why uh, Amemer Ravashi ate is because they figured that the shear copper was giving them from his portion, from his shear. Mazutu loyach. Mazutu didn't take a chance. Mazutu was worried that maybe he was giving them from the Balabais. And before the Balabais knows about it, you're not allowed to eat. Adahochi osi marabarisik. In the meantime, Maribarisik arrived, the owner arrived. Ashkechinu, he found them, the Amalei Larisa, and he told the sharecropper, Amailoi Agsis Lul Rabbanan Mahanach Shfirta. Why didn't you bring the rabbis from the better stuff? And there was better stuff. Mazutra still didn't eat. Amrulei, so Amemir of Ashi said, Amrulei Amemir of Ashi, Lamazutra, Hashta Amailoi Achumar. Now you have nothing to worry about. If it's the sheer crop, as you were allowed to eat, even if it's Mori Bar Isik, he showed that he was happy with it because he said you should have taken from the better stuff. And we said if there is better stuff, that's a good indication. But Tanya, if you find better stuff, Truman, that shows approval. 
Amalahu, so he said to them, don't confuse truma. Truma, that's a mitzvah deraisa. And people are pleased to do that with their money. It's a mitzvah. And therefore he's pleased with it. But over here, even if he said it, he might have only said it because he was embarrassed. Now there is an obvious question over here which I didn't have time to research. And the obvious question is, and it's not a mitzvah to do achnos asorchim? And it's not a mitzvah to give to people on the, on the caliber of Ravashi, the editor of Shas, to give him food? It's as if he's makrib bikurim? That's an obvious question. This, this Mario Brace was a tough guy. We find other places in Shas that, the, that they were wary of him. Well, that could be why Marzutu was chosh. Right. Because, you see, otherwise you could say that the sharecropper was given the understanding that he would give it. Like we said that there's an understanding that people are miyayish, the stuff that falls off on the trees. Toshma, another case. Now, before we learn this inside, uh, a preface, we all know that in order for food to be susceptible to contamination, it has to be moistened. It has to be moistened by one of the uh, official liquids, and if you don't remember, there's an acronym to know what are the seven liquids. Michal Avram, you might not have heard this acronym. It's a good acronym to know. Yad Shochat Dam, which is Yud is Yayin, Dalid is Dam, Shin is Shemen, Ches is Cholov, which is milk, Tes is Tal, and Dalit is Dvash, honey, and uh, Mem is Mayim. Those are the seven official liquids. So if a food is moistened with the seven official liquids, it becomes susceptible to contamination. But there's another condition, and that is that you have to be happy with it being moistened. So if it rains on crops and it becomes soggy, so you're not happy that it became moistened. It's not moksha the kabbal tumma. But if there's dew, and because of that you could pop it in your mouth without washing it, so you're happy with it, so then it would be moksha the kabbal tumma. But there's a further condition, as we'll learn now. Tajma. Oideyu atalaleyan. If Mechal Avram has fruit, and the dew is still upon them, v'samach, and he's happy that the dew is there. Harizeh bechiyutan. It's considered moistened to be mekabel toma. Nagvu, if before he got to his fruit, it already dried up the tal. Afal pishesama. Even though he's happy, it got moistened because it got cleaned off. Einon bechiyutan. It's not considered moistened. Now, time am I? Isn't it because we don't say? Rava's retroactive business, that since you're happy in it now, it shows retroactively that you were happy with it, in it when it actually got moistened. That he's happy now that it got moistened. We don't say it's as if he was happy when it happened. So therefore, if it's not wet still, it's not Moshe the Kabbal Tumma. Says Gemara, you're right. But that's only because of a special Gzeri Sarkasif. You see, the Pasuk reads, Yud Tes Nun. Oh. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yud Tof Nun. I just want to see if you're awake. Uh, the, Pasuk, the Pasuk reads, it's a tough life. The Pasuk reads, uh, Yud Tof Nun, which would read Yite. But the Messiah is that we read it Yutan. But it's not written with a Vav. So therefore we darshan that even if it was Yutan, if it fell by itself, like do, 
it's only under the circumstances of kiyitein. That means that when it fell by itself, it was with your active das knowledge, like when you would put the water on yourself. So therefore, if it's still wet now, so it's with your active knowledge, it's like kiyitein, then it's Moshe Lekabotoma. But if by the time you saw it, it dried up, so therefore, when it became wet, it wasn't with your active knowledge, that does not become susceptible to tumult. Let's see it inside. Shani Asim Dechsiv Ki Yitain. It's written without the Vav. Ad Shi Yitain. You have to put it on yourself. Ihochi says the Gemara, if that's the case, Reisha Nami. Then in the Reisha also where it says that if it, the dew fell it and it's still there, it's Mechabal Tumult. But you didn't put it on yourself. It says the Gemara could wrap up. Therefore we have to reconcile as like Rapapa. Do Rapapa Rami? Rapapa asks contradiction. Ksiv ki yitain. The actual words, word is written, yud tof nun. Without a vav. That's read ki yitain. But for karinon ki yutan, the Messiah is that we read it, ki yutan, even if it fell by itself. Okay, so how do we reconcile the two? But inon ki yutan, when it falls itself, dum yud Like when you put it on. My yitain ledas when you put it on, you're aware of it. When it gets on, af kiyutan nami ledas. It's only if you're aware of it when it's put on. If by the time you became aware that it was due, it dried up already. So the time when it was came on, you weren't aware of it yet. It's not moksha lekabutum. Tajma. So now, if you remember, we said that if Doctor Block has stuff, even with a simon that's swept away by a wave or by an overflow of the waters, by a tsunami, by a flash flood. The one who finds it could keep it, even if it has a simon. How do we know that a lost article that was swept away by a flash, flash flood? She muteres. When we talk about the mitzvah of returning a lost article, so shall you do for the person's donkey, for his garment, all the lost articles of your brother, it gets lost from him, and you find it. Now the Pasuk says an extra word, it's lost from him. Now, lost from him implies that at the time it was lost, it was only lost from Dr. Black. But it's accessible to other people. That excludes something that's swept away by a fl flash flood. That at the time that it's swept away, it's not accessible to anybody. Where it was lost from the owner, because he dropped it. But it's available to everybody. Yotzezu, when it's swept away by a flood, it's not available to anyone, and therefore that makes it become hefker. And when it finally lands in Shalom's property, Shalom can keep it even if it has a simon. The sura and the iser of not keeping a lost article is similar to the heter. Ma hetera. Bain the isposim and bain the lesposim. And if it's swept away by a flash flood, Shalom could keep it whether it has a simon or not. Shara. Afi sura. When Mark finds the big pen, it's forbidden to, for him to keep it bain the isposim or bain the lesposim. Whether it has a name on it, whether it doesn't. Asura. Why? Because even if it doesn't have a name on it, but the one who dropped it wasn't aware of it yet. And it's Yishalei Medas, which is a raya to a baya. That since the owner wasn't Miyayish yet, you can't keep it, even if it doesn't have a sin. And to Yufta the Rabbah, to Yufta, this is a refutation of Rabbah. Very rare that this happens. To Yufta the Rabbah, very rare in all of Ashas, 
when he argues with Abaya, it only happens six times. Tiyufta the Rav Tiyufta the Hilchasa. The law is Kavosei the Abaya. The law is like Abaya. Beyal Kegam. The Yud is the first case. That's our case. Yushalayim Das. Says the Gemara. Now the Gemara plugs in the halacha according to Abaya. What's going to be? Now that Rava has been re- refuted, Hani Tamre Dezika, dates that are swept off the tree by the wind, Heichi Achlinalu. Now this happens all the time. Shelley is walking in the street, he finds dates swept off with the wind, and he pops them in his mouth. But the owner isn't aware that he lost it yet, so he wasn't Miyayish. Says Since there's all kinds of lizards and crawling insects, the ka'achleilahu that eat them right away, the owner has in mind that anything that the wind takes off is miyayish. It's a blanket yish. May kara yish miyayish minayim. Ah, but what about? If Shelley is walking in the valley, in the valley, there might be orphans living there. And it comes from the orphans' field, and orphans can't be Michael because a cotton can't be Michael. Ha-ha! Shelley never thought about it when he was eating the dates. Says Gemara, Yasme de Labane Mechila Ninumai. They, you can't depend that they're Michael because they, they're, a cotton can't be Michael. Says the Gemara, Shelley doesn't have to worry. In the, in the valley, there's 40 fields. And the majority are not your same. So you could go bust in the majority. You don't, you don't have to worry. You could go bust in the right. Says the Gemara, Murzik the Aymid Mai. What about if he knows that it's coming from a field of orphans? Or what about kracht of my? What about if around the person's field there's a walled city, a wall, and therefore vermin are not creeping? Amalei, it's hacker than Asirin. Then Shelley can't eat it. Shelley has to know that. Then he can't eat it. He can't, he can't assume that there's years. Says the Gemara, Kricha is spiritual Arabic. It says in the Mishnah, if you find bundles of grain in the Rishus Arabic, Harielu Shaloi, Shali could keep it. Says the Gemara, Amar Rabbi. Rabbi says an interesting Kiddush. Even if the bundles have a simon, they're tied in a very distinctive way. I'm a rabbi of Afilo Bedavish Yesh by Simon. Ah, if it has a Simon, why could Shelly why could Shelly keep it? It has a Simon. Says the Gemara, Rabba holds that if you leave it in the Rishas Arabim, the Simon is not going to stay long because people are going to step on it and it's going to lose its Simon. Alma Kesava Rabba Simon Osi Lidoris Simon that stepped upon Loyavi Simon. Rava disagrees. Rava Amalei Shano Lebedavish Eimbei Simon. It's only if it doesn't have a distinctive Simon. Ava Bedavish Eishbei Simon. If it has a distinctive identifying feature, Chayv Laachris Shelly has to announce it. Alma Kesava Rava Simon Osi Lidoris Havi Simon. That's something that gets stepped on. We don't assume it's going to lose its. Identifying symbol. Now, the Ikinamasnal Shmites of Apinapsha, some teach this independently. Simon Asi Lidaris, a simon that's normally stepped on, Rabba Ama Leavi Simon. It's not a simon. And therefore, uh, Shelley could keep it. The Rabba Ama Havi Simon. Tanan, and now we ask from the Mishnah. Uh, no. So now we ask from another mission. Tanan. I want to tell the Ilam, although it's a long daf, we should realize that Hashem was very kind to us, that we didn't have to learn the sugi of Shtaris over this weekend. 
Imagine after the Tanis working out those cases of the Shtaris. It's a lot easier working with bundles and dates. It's a lot easier. And uh, it's going to be a lot easier to, on Matzi Shabbos at 10.30 and on Purim at 8.45. Uh, and by the way, let's get, let's get those times straight. Matzi Shabbos 10.30. Shelly, did you put out the times? I did not. I think Irving did. I did. Yeah, okay, so 10.30, Matzah Shabbos, and 8.45, Sunday. Uh, 7.50, the rest of the week. We bumped five minutes later, the rest of the week, because Mincha Marav is getting later. So 7.50, the rest of the week. Um, So now, Tnan, we learned to the Mishnah, Kri Chais Berishas Arab, sheaves in the public domain, Hariyelu Shaloi, Shelly could keep it. Berishas Yachid, now Berishas Yachid here is loosely translated. It's relative to Berishas Arab. It doesn't mean Berishas Yachid because something in Berishas Yachid belongs to the owner. You have no right even to go in there. I mean, what are you finding something on my property? When it says Rishis HaYachid, it means over here, relative to Rishis HaRabim, this is a uh, not heavily walked area. It's more of a, uh, a private, uh, 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 less used area. So, Rishis HaRabim, Ariel Shalai. If it's in the Rishis HaRabim, you find that you could keep it. Rishis HaYachid, in the place that's not so heavily traveled, so obviously, if there's no semen, then you shouldn't have to announce it even in the Rosh Hashanah. There's nothing to announce. It doesn't have a semen. It has a semen. It has a semen. If it's in Rosh Hashanah, so it's going to be heavily walked upon, and it's going to quickly lose its semen. So you could keep it. Alma Simino Osi Lidar is something that's going to be trampled upon, Layavi Simon, to Yufta the Rava. It's a refutation of Rava. So Rava says, no. It's talking about something that doesn't have a Simon. Amalak Rava Lailam de Lesbu Simon. Now, if it doesn't have a Simon, then in the private area, what are you going to, what are you going to announce? Udika Amrit Burisha Zayachid Mai Makris in the private area, what are you going to announce? Ah, Machriz Mokam. You announce, I found this in the private area on the corner, uh, on the corner of uh, Winston and Churchill. And then the person says, oh, I lost a sheave there. The simon is the item. Now, that doesn't work if it's a Rosh because in Rosh Hashanah it gets kicked around and you can't announce a place. The Rabbi says, the Rabbi Amar, Mokum lo yavi simen. What do you ask me? I wasn't following. The Rabbi Amar, Mokum lo yavi simen. That's not enough. If you were... Now, the way, the way Rashi learns, um, Rashi learns Machriz Mokam. Rashi says that he doesn't announce the item. They ain't a Machriz Shema Aveda. He says, I found it in the Rishas HaYachet, in this private area on Winston and Churchill. And he, he, when you come and you say what the item is, that's enough. And Misha of the men of Eidah, Mamakum Plani, Yavah Yivayimer, Ma'ibet. The Zebav Aimer, Avad Tisham Chayfetz Plani. I lost, I, 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 I lost this item, and that's enough of the uh, of a simon. Now, 
here the Gemara says another machlokes. The Rabbi Omar, Rabbi says, Mokam lo yavi simen. The place is not a simen. Ditmar, Mokam, Rabbi Omar lo yavi simen. Giving the place is not a simen. The Rabbi Omar have a simen. And Rabbi says it is a simen. Okay, we're going to stop over here, Rabbi Isai, um, and take, take, t continue it at 10.30 on Matzah Shabbos. Uh, we want to wish everybody a very delightful Shabbos. I also want to say that the, I did the Mishnah Yomis already. It's on, it's on, oh, it's not on it yet. It's going to be on it soon. Uh, I'm going to do that now. I also recorded already today. It's on to any time on uh, Kalaloshin. On YouTube, I already recorded for the Shabbos table pre Purim edition. So that's another shear on the Megillah. I also recorded uh, and I also gave a share called More Thoughts on the Megillah Sassan, which I gave here between Mincha Mariv, and I'm going to upload it now also. So there's three shearim there's the Megillah Esther Gems that I gave Wednesday night. It's for the Shabbos table, and there's also a shear, more thoughts on the Megillah. So there's three shiurim uh, available. Uh, also, Mitz Hashem, we are planning to do next week the first Agada shear. That's right, so we're going to be busy with Mechiris Chametz. So we're getting ready. Uh, um, Gedalia says, don't bother me, I have a wedding to make. Uh, I, he, he's not thinking of Chametz now. He's thinking about his daughter. But uh, if anybody wants to sponsor the first Haggadah this year, 718-916-3100, rmmwsi at aol.com. Thank you very much for joining us, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you.